Dear Diary, um, let's come up with a couple more examples um, of why I'm the most important human being of all time. Now, this is what this is what hurts me so much because most people don't look at the econ- the like the the recession and go. I would love just give me just give me three weeks. Just give me three weeks, and I I will guarantee you in any way you want that I will fix the recession in three weeks. Just give me three weeks. Hell, I could do it in one if if I really want to rush. None of the world's problems are hard to solve. In fact, some of the fucking assholes in charge could solve them. I don't believe any of the economists could fix the recession. They can't. They're the fucking idiots who said we wouldn't get in the recession. They were the fucking idiots who said the free market regulates itself. These fucking fucktards don't know anything. And even they now say it. The world's leading economists all say the same thing. Nine-year-old Christopher was smarter than all the world's economists. Well, we all agree with that. You said the free market could regulate itself. Ten-year-old Christopher said the free market can't. The free market must pollute itself, must corrupt itself. And what do I say? My favorite quote by me? The free market only lets you choose who is going to rip you off. That's the only choices you get in this world. The recession, I can fix it. Most people don't want to be, have that much responsibility. Most people really wouldn't want to be the president of the United States. They think, oh, well, I could fix it. No, you couldn't, and you wouldn't know what the fuck to do anyhow. Like, you see every day, watch politics. Like in New York City, we have all kinds of problems. And they always create an either-or-ism. That's one of my biggest complaints. It's either-or-ism. So they say... Well, if you want better subways, well, then we're going to have to raise a subway fare or we're going to have to raise taxes. It's always either or. It's one of the biggest lies these dirty scumbag elitists use against you, and you believe it every time. In fact, it's such a great lie that the exact opposite is true. It costs, it earns us tons of money to end homelessness tomorrow. I can can end the recession in three weeks and put... $10 $10 billion in your pocket. That's what it costs. It costs negative $10 billion for me to end the recession. I can, I can get rid of the deficit in a year. $14 trillion deficit. You're oh, that's possible. You're good. Well, ask me how I do it. Or better yet, just go read my 100 Innovations for New York City. Because a lot of people read that and went, it was pretty fucking sprawling. And it was, it was microscopic, yet it was still longer, it, much more comprehensive and, and, comp- and, and intelligent than anything anyone else had ever written. And many people said that, strangers too. They said, this is the smartest political platform ever. I'm like, no shit. Of course, again, that's not saying much. Um, the Constitution's a fucking piece of shit. I mean, all these people don't know what the fuck they're doing. You only look up to it because you don't know what else to do. But the shit's garbage. All the shit's garbage. Marx was a fucking idiot. These people are all hacks. Um, and that's not good. I doesn't, I, it, since I was a little boy, I could see through all the shit that everyone else was impressed by, and that's not good. I mean, right? Were you happy when you found out there was no Santa? No, none of us were. So that's every minute of my life. <laughs> Do you understand? That's every minute of my life. When I met Delfino, we started dating. Well, before we even started dating, I said, I know I can't trust her, and I'm never going to fully open up my heart to her because I know exactly how this is going to turn out. I know exactly everything she's going to do. She did everything she was going to do. There was no way to curb it. Again, you think you can fix everything? No, you can't fix everything. Um, You can fix everything if you have... You can fix everything if you have unlimited resources. Um, But if you want... uh, If you want to... Like, I can't fix the recession tomorrow by myself. If you say, all right, tell us what you need. So, for instance, when I ran for mayor, in, if you look at each one of my 100 innovations, I'm like, all right, I'm going to end homelessness. This is exactly what I'm going to do right here. Oh, I just saved you $700 million a year. I not only solved the problem permanently, but I did it while saving you $700 million. Not bad. People read it and they all went, conservatives and liberals read it and went, that makes complete sense. Holy fuck. Each issue. It wasn't like this is going to cost a lot of money. For instance, how much is it going to cost us to legalize drugs tomorrow? That's right. It's going to cost us negative billions to legalize drugs tomorrow. Now, I said, here's what we'll do. We'll legalize marijuana for a year. We'll have the government sell it and tax it like liquor or post offices or whatever. Now, I, I'm afraid this is going to digress too much because then you're going to be like, wait a minute, you still have to do this. I, believe me, I can, people have grilled me on all kinds of things, and I destroy them every time. Let me give you a quick analogy or example. Um, a lot of my ideas when I ran for mayor, people said, that's a brilliant idea, and your solution is flawless. But who? But to pull that off, you have to get it passed by the city council. 
or Albany? And I said, no, I don't. They're like, yes, you do. And I'm like, lazy thinking. I said, did you forget about a charter revision commission and all these? We're talking about people who are like, they live and breathe New York City politics. They all said the same thing. Oh, shit. You're right. Charter revision commission. I said, thank you. I'm going to put, should we cut the city, should we rescind the 100% pay raise the city council got from Giuliani and Bloomberg? The voters are going to jump and go, fuck yeah. Oops, I just saved you a fuckload of money. Now, of course, the city council would never pass 100% uh, pay cut for themselves. They got, they were making $55,000 a year, which is pretty good pay for a part-time job and no actual part job duties. Then they were bribed by Giuliani and Bloomberg with our money. And now they make 112000 That's even more than 100% increase, but whatever. Um, I said, I'm going to put it in a charter revision. City council has no fucking say. Ha, 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 ha. I'm putting all of my plans. Charter revision. Every November. Charter revision. Ha, ha, ha. I just eliminated the legislature. Ha, ha. And it's not even like a dictatorial tool either. Because I'm not. I'm not making decisions. I'm putting each one of my ideas on the ballot. And the voters get to decide. Should we raise cigarette taxes? 300% more. It's your government, your society. Of course, I would have to, I would argue in public, and I'd have to argue my arguments because a lot of evil forces would buy ads and get the newspapers to go against me. I even I even solved the problem of the media. I solved all these problems. You can't name a problem in society. I solve broken hearts, domestic violence. I dared people when I ran for mayor. I said, name a problem that I can't solve. I dare you. I dare you. Name a problem. And each time people would throw things at me, I'd come up with, I'd give them a three-hour answer. And they'd be like, holy fuck, this guy knows all this shit. I'm like, no shit. We can fix the world tomorrow, and it doesn't cost a penny. And so many people were upset. They're like, you've got to keep running for office. To this day, people still say, I can't wait till you run for office again. I said, I'm never running for office again. I can't do everything for you. I've already murdered myself a zillion times over in, in, to try and help you fucking shitheads. And you shitheads stopped me every time. So fuck it. Fuck it. Now I'm trying to get, get away from caring about other people. And, and I need to care a little bit about my, my fucking art and music before I kill myself. I gotta. Because a lot of my shit, even my most meaningless shit, is more important than anybody else's most meaningful shit. That's the way I operate. Um, I can go on and on and on and on and on. Um, you really don't understand it, though. It's, I mean, nothing this society does is intelligent. I walk down this, I can't walk down any street without my heart breaking a zillion times. Example, you can go into any supermarket, and you see it probably every day. You can look at a guy and a girl who check each other out in the, in the produce, line, uh, pro- produce aisle, and they check each other out. Is one of them, they might be attracted to each other. They're both single, they're both lonely. Is one of them going to hit on the other one? You know the answer, that they're going to both be fucking chicken shit cowards. And nothing's gained. And they both go home sad and lonely. Wow. Fucking idiots. I have so many solutions to that. And they're all no-brainers. You can figure them out too. It's like, one, like in the old days, if a person was married or engaged, they'd have a ring. So if a guy wanted to pick up a girl, he could look at her hand and say, oh, she's already spoken for. We don't do that anymore. I mean, we should do it the opposite way. If a girl wants guys to ask her on a date, she should, like, wear a purple scarf. You know, they used to say gay guys would wear the handkerchief a certain way in their back pocket and say, I'm ready to fucking blow jobs in the bushes. Um, I don't understand nothing the society does is intelligent. I've tried, for instance, here in New York City, I've tried desperately. Time Out New York is a pretty big magazine, very powerful. They can change anything in the world they want tomorrow if they wanted to. But they're just a bunch of fucking fuckheads who don't have any desire to fucking do anything intelligent. They're immature, and even their staff will admit that. They fucking feel like their lives are meaningless, and their lives are meaningless. You're writing stupid shit about stupid shit. And they, they've they done so many things to try and improve the dating scene in New York. Like, they have all personal. So they'll have all these big big pictures of people, friends of theirs and stuff, who, who can't get a date, and with a little blurb about them. So they're like, all right, and hey, with, with, with major promotion like this, this is going to help. It turned out to be a total flop. Shocker. And I, was, and I wrote them all these extensive letters. I, I sincerely tried to help. Their arrogance and ego overrides intelligence. Simple things, too. Like I'd even say, all right, the first thing is, you know, it's not about getting people dates because you see that. It's not a, the first problem is not about finding someone because look at all the married people who did find someone. They got married and now they want to jump off a bridge. It's not about finding a date. It's about first and foremost, 
getting humans to stop being mentally ill, dysfunctional fucking monsters. Because every time you do get your friends a date and you do get your friends laid, how does that story end? That's right. Always the same way, with destruction, heartbreak, chaos. So apparently, getting people a date isn't the real issue. Because if we made all human beings intelligent, smart, funny, not insecure, then they would no longer have. See, I'm not like most humans. I go after the problem, not the symptom. People not being able to get laid or getting dates or most people being single or being lonely is not the problem. It's the symptom. The fact that humans are dysfunctional retards is the problem. Go after the problem and you fix everything else. If we elevate human beings to a... Because remember, human beings can be amazing creatures. They can do wonderful things with their brains and they can do wonderful things as, with their hearts. Very rarely do they because there's no obligation to. We live in a society that accepts if you're a fucktard. We live in a society that accepts if you're fucking uncreative. We live in a society that accepts if you're a thief or a liar or a fraud. Um... And we live in a society that shits on you if you're different or you deviate from the norm, that robot norm. So it's a total disaster all around. All of these things. And you can ask Delfino. I mean, Delfino would see a lot of my shit and be like, and over and over again, Delfino would just, her jaw would be dropping, would be working on something. She'd be like, I don't understand why you're not the, mo why you don't, the President of the United States already. I don't understand why you aren't already the most important musician on the planet. I don't understand. And many people who see me, strangers too, my whole life have said the same thing. I have worked at factories from all, when, when I was... Like before the age of 21, I worked a lot of blue-collar factories in Massachusetts, welding. And I would immediately be the best welder in the shop. And I was the youngest. Take me a couple – I'm, I'm faster on the curve than anyone else. And we'd even do contests. I'd be like, hey, all right, who, uh, say, look at these, these three welds. Who thinks these are the best? Which one's the best? And everyone would go, number two welds the best. And then I'd say to all my coworkers, ha-ha, you asshole said your welding was better. They'd be like, fuck a jerk. A lot of people – you'll find out. A lot of people hate my guts. But they never hate my guts for a legitimate reason. A lot of people hate my guts because – I can understand why they'd be like, fucking jerk, thinks he's so fucking amazing. Or, and some people, and many people have admitted this, would be like, well, he is fucking amazing, which makes me resent him even more. <laughs> it's like, fucking jerk. I wish I was as fucking talented as him. It's like, no, you, trust me, you don't. Grass is greener on the other side, bitch. Um, we could fix everything in the world tomorrow. You can't. Barack Obama can't. No one can. Seven billion people putting their brains together can't. One man can um, all my ideas are fucking flat-out genius. Here's a perfect example of a no-brainer idea that nobody else thought of. Oof. Piggyback promotions. Everyone agrees this is fucking flat-out brilliant. And it's so obvious. The Beatles, they had a lot of bands they liked and artists they liked who were not successful. And they even put out their, they created their Apple records to do it. And they ran that very poorly. And uh, Apple, their Apple Corporation was run very poorly because the Beatles were not very smart guys. Not a lot of self-discipline either. I'm a fucking superhuman machine from the future. And I always have been. And, um, burp. Piggyback promotions. All of my CD releases, the last song on my CD is a song by another artist. It's, it's kind of similar to the concept when you ever go to the movies and before the movie you paid to see, there are excerpts of other movies and that might entice you to go see those movies. Not a bad idea. Congratulations to whoever thought of it. It's a little bit of a no-brainer. Um, so why don't we do that? Oh, rock shows. I went to see, oh, for instance, I once went to Providence, Rhode Island to see the Ramones. And there was this new band opening up for them that nobody had heard of called Jane's Addiction. And they were great. Jane's Addiction were better than the Ramones. And I was like, wow, piggyback promotion. It works. Why don't they do that with albums? The idea is this. If Guns N' Roses... When they put out their first major labor album, Appetite of Destruction, which is a piece of shit, and I seem to be the only person who recognizes that it's a total piece of shit, and it's a fucking corporate fraud. But people have no detective skills. Um, piggyback promotions. All they had to do was say, the last song on the album is going to be a song, by not by us, by one of our favorite unsigned artists. Now, if that album sells 15 million copies, the, that last song, 15 million people are going to listen to that last song and probably like it, and they're going to go buy the album. Wow, you just sold. Now, you just might have sold another 50 million albums. Not bad. Why don't all record companies do that? You think that'd be a no-brainer. If I ran a record company, if I ran Atlanta Records, I'd be like, um, you want to sign with our label, you can. But here's the deal. The last song on all of your albums has to be by another artist on our label who you like. Piggyback promotions. You guys all promote each other. It's teamwork. 
If you don't like that, go with another label, all right? Fuck you. Um, Alanis Morissette, top-selling album by a female ever, with Jagged Little Pill. Why not put a song by her favorite unknown artist at the end of it? Now with CDs, it's even more inexcusable because you got all that empty space at the end. Now, most people who work in the music business all say the same thing. Wow, that would work. That, that would work. Fuck radio. If you got people buying the album anyhow, put a fucking song at the end of it. If you got to put a, if you got to put a minute, two minutes of silence because you don't want it to fucking ruin the flow, go for it. But, but use your fucking heads. Everything everyone does in this world is stupid. Even the way they do movies is stupid. The previews is okay. If you look at most previews, they're fucking poorly done. Everything is poorly done. Even when they have a good idea, humans execute it poorly. It's a disgrace. And since I was a little boy, I've been pulling my hair out of my head. I, I'm now at the point where I've let go. I accept that you human beings can't do anything right. You'll never be able to do anything right. And I accept it. And I'm trying now to be more selfish to say, enough about you. I need to start caring about me. But, I mean, you can't name any field. My innovations in architecture are outrageous. We're not going to, you want to know, am I going to do 500 million hours of diary? No, I'm not. So fuck you. If you don't think I'm the most important person of all time, it doesn't mean to fuck, it doesn't make a fucking difference. I was just making a point that all the people who stopped me from doing my work, all the people, and remember, we can name names, tens of thousands of people who all united to stop my runs for mayor, to stop me from even publicizing ideas, to stop me from even getting a, any dialogue fuck is this I can't even I can't even get I mean the number of people who stopped me from playing guitar the number of people who stopped, actively tried to stop me from playing drums the number of people who tried to stop me from making music from doing cartoons from doing photography tens of thousands of names every day of my life my art has been smashed and ruined my work has been smashed and ruined my scientific essays have been smashed and ruined every i'm not joking every day of my life people are doing fucked up shit to me because i am a pariah from the future okay i'm a gay man on a planet where everyone else is a fucking anti-gay bigot i am the ultimate ostracized futurist and whatever we're fucked you fuck out of luck and get used to it. But I can go on and on. Pick any category. Automotive design. Retarded. Retarded. Everything human... TV programming. Retarded. Everything they do is retarded. Pick a, pick a category. Electricity. Con Edison. Um, I'm trying to, off the top of my head, think of different ideas. Uh, very few things. Even things... One of the few things in the human, that the human race did right. I say is the invention of the bicycle. The bicycle is almost a perfect invention. It's been almost unchanged in 200 years because it's a perfect design. It's brilliant. And you can adapt it to so many different things too. Uh, I would still improve a ton. I want to start my own bike company because I'm like, there's no excuse for this. There's no excuse for how much you guys cost, how much you guys charge to make each bike. There's no excuse for that you you still put air in the tires so people get flats when you have all kinds of foam composites and and plastics where you could have wheels just as springy that can never get a flat. This is a fuck. All this stupid shit you guys are doing is fucking outrageous. Your brake designs are inefficient. Nothing these people do. Everything you in your life, the design of a toilet, the plumbing design that humans came up with is retarded. It is, you can make a, you can make a hundred different designs tomorrow for a toilet that can't possibly overflow. It's not hard to do, right? Unfucking believable Nothing is done intelligently in this world. And I can go on and on and on if you think I'm exaggerating. I'll get into the great specifics. I am unquestionably the most important human of all time. I haven't even gone into the, like, the personal shit. Um, this, every innovation of mine is fantastic. The idea that when I was a fucking teenager, I would pick up the phone book, pick random names out of the phone book, and send them homemade birthday, uh, homemade Christmas cards. And it would say at the bottom, it would say, you don't know who I am and you don't need to know who I am. I'm doing generosity here in, what, in a way that I can no, in no way recoup it because I argued that I call that ping pong generosity. Most people are generous, but they're only generous to people who they, who they think will give something back to them. Ping pong generosity. And that's a load of shit um, because people mostly are generous to people they think are going to be generous back to them. Though that's not generosity, assholes. So I would challenge myself as a human being. I mean, the stuff I did as a teenager is mind-boggling. 
testing my own, to this day I still test my own prejudices. I invented method acting accidentally when I was 15. I would test the human, the human brain and the human emotion system by doing all kinds of things. Like I would try to think about sad things and make myself, and feel that chemical release in my body to understand, ah, that's why women cry when they're happy. Same chemical release in the chest. It's the same, that's why people think love is the heart in the chest. It's not. That's, it's because there's that chemical release in the chest from depression, from happiness, and all kinds of different forces. It's the same chemical release, and people, that's why they said the heart, because it's right there, right there. Yeah, it's not the heart, obviously. And so I would manipulate my own emotions. I would think of something really sad to make myself cry and then immediately think of something happy to make myself happy and all these things to test my emotions. I found out 20, 10 years later that's method acting. You know, I think about their dog who died and they cry. Um, I accidentally invented it. I mean, I can't tell you. They could never do books that cover 1% of what I did. It's never going to happen. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not upset about that. It, it doesn't bother me because it's not physically possible. I mean, you couldn't write 50 million books to describe the works of Christopher Brodeur. It's 50 million books isn't going to cover it. <laughs> That's retarded. 50 million books will. No, because I can do one book per idea. You understand? I, I, I have to shortchange a lot of my ideas when I fucking diarize and stuff. I have to do a fucking half ass. Um, I have to do a half ass shit because of physical limitations. It's fucking crazy. It's insane and obscene that I fucking do fucking five piece fucking diary entries that are 20 minutes a piece. That's obscene. I think that's wrong, but I don't have a choice, do I now? Ugh. And I'm mostly only doing these diaries because I hope I can fucking kill myself soon. So there'll be some, I mean, I really shouldn't give a shit about my, I don't, it's not about legacy. Like, well, I should go down to history books as the most brilliant person of all time. It's not about ego. It's, I wish something could be learned by the tragedy of my life. I wish you humans could learn that you could be all that you can be. You could be better than you are. I wish human beings could realize, wow, all those fucking assholes who murdered Christopher Brodeur and ruined all his work, they did a lot more damage than we thought. Um, I could run for office and win a city council seat tomorrow. I'm not going to. It's pointless. Um, I'm the most important lawyer in history. My legal innovations are shocking. Shall we try do a 5,000 diary entry? <laughs> I? Fuck it. All right, so this has been... I'm just going to fucking end it here and go smoke pot because I don't want to think about all the destruction of my life. Again, remember, I'm not only the most important human being of all time, but I am also the human being of all time who had more of his ideas destroyed and crushed and blocked than anyone else in the history. So that's a double tragedy, okay? It wasn't like, well, I could, there was enough, enough hours in the day and I wasn't rich enough to execute a lot of my ideas or even write them down or, or this and that. Oh, no, I got less work done than any human being in history. Now, I still got more work done than most humans in history because I'm a worker, a fucking holic who works at the speed of light. I do cartoon of work for people, and they're all like, how the fuck do you work so fast? Like, Because I have no fucking patience. People see me record, they're like, how the fuck did you do that so fast? It's like, because I don't have any fucking patience or any free time. I move faster than everybody else. I think faster than everybody else. I sometimes talk faster than everybody else, although my motor vo vocabulary skills are disappearing, obviously, from torture and lack of sleep and nutritional deprivation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I do, I would like some of the people who fucked me over, I would like them to go down in history, though, for having destroyed the world. I would like that. That I would like. I think bad people deserve all the credit they can get. People like the Trachtenbergs, David Danzig, Delfino, Harry Stuckey, all my lawyers, all the reporters in City Hall, all my allies, all the good government groups, all these different, different, different people. And um, we'll see. It should open up. Harder? There. Oh, crap. I just remembered I forgot some things. Uh, that's the problem with one of my biggest flaws is when you have a zillion ideas and you think fast than everyone else, you can't talk fast enough, and I certainly can't write or type fast enough to even get the ideas down. It's, it's misery. Being me is hell. That's why you always hear this, the cliche of the torture genius. Throughout history, anyone who's smarter than everyone else has to be tortured. It's, it's inherent. Come on, duh. Um, my life has been agony. I've wanted to die since I was five. Come on, that should tell you a lot. Um, and it wasn't because I wasn't the most awesome human being of all time. Um, I could have done so many important things in my life if I had just murdered all my other stuff and had kissed ass or at least played the game. 
but this is, oh, here's one of the things I forgot. I was mentioning like when I worked in factories and stuff when I was 19 and stuff. Everywhere I worked, they'd always say the same thing. Bosses, coworkers, they'd be like, you're really, really, really smart. Why are you working here? I've heard that my whole life. I'm like, because I like to weld. Like, oh, I do. I enjoy welding. I enjoyed all, every job I've ever had. I enjoyed, unless I had a boss who was a fucking jerk. I like doing things. I like getting things done. I like learning things. I like trying things. I like doing things. I like being productive. Also, I like having jobs because I always improve them. I say, oh, I, I watch it. I was like, all right, this is how you say it's done. Okay, there's got to be a better way because the humans designed this. It's going to be fucking wrong. And I always found a better way. Sometimes bosses would embrace that. Sometimes they take credit for my ideas. Most of the time, they fire me because they got upset that my I was smarter than they were. Um. My whole life, to this day, people are like, where'd you go to school? I'm like, school? Do I, I? I'm insulted. You think I went to school? Um, I wouldn't go near a college. College is for people who don't know anything. I should be opening up my own college, touching the university. <laughs> uh, but, uh, so I forgot to make that point about all the blue-collar workers. Everywhere I go my whole life, they're like, you're really smart. Just like as a performer, I go, I perform all over the place. People are like, you're really fucking mind blowing. Why? Just last night I did a show at the Root Museum, and fucking Rick Patrick was driving me uh, back to East Village. He's like, why aren't you making millions of dollars as a guitarist? Stop doing all your other shit. Of course, that's the problem. People see my photographs. They're like, why aren't you making millions of dollars as a photographer? You're the greatest photographer ever. I'm like, because then I have to stop doing music and everything else. You understand? People see my architect. They're like. You're the greatest architect ever. Why don't you focus on that and make millions of dollars and create all these great, crazy buildings around the world? People who see my illustrations and cartoons are like, you're a great artist. Why aren't you making millions of dollars as an artist? And it's that in every category. It, my life was literally impossible from the get-go. So it's that's why it infuriates me all the fucking bad things people did to me. It's like, no, 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 no. My life is hell without you fucking with me, all right? I, I've i created 10,000 musical acts, okay? If every, if I was a billionaire and every day of my life was perfect and I had every no problems in my life, I couldn't do my work. If I had no problems in life, there would not be enough hours in the day for me to do my work. If I had unlimited money, there would not be enough hours in the day for me to do almost any of my work in a 200-year period. And I couldn't take notes to tell fucktards how to do half my shit. My life was impossible from the moment I was born. That's one of the main reasons I've always wanted to die. And I still want nothing more than just to die. I want to be set free from this because I'm in my own prison. Even without you human beings throwing me in all your proverbial and literal prisons, I'm in my own prison called hyper-creativity, hyper-intelligence, hyper-integrity, etc. Just being the most honest person in the world is agonizing. I don't want to hurt people's feelings. When I see your band play and I think you guys have no creativity, you haven't, shouldn't be allowed to hold an instrument, I don't want to say that to you and break your heart. Although somebody should break your heart because that means you're going to either become a better fucking artist or you're going to quit. People need to have their hearts broken. So it's not completely bad that people have their hearts broken. But a lot of the times you people have your hearts broken. It's just stupid. And there was no need for that. All right? There's no need for men and women to be fighting all the time. Fucking stupid, petty, fake, hormonal bullshit. People, get your shit together. I, ugh, I gotta get off this thing. Have a nice day and good luck with your human race.